Among the chorus of whys is the chorus of what now? How do we stop this bloody trend terrorizing America and America's children? Last month, President Biden signed the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, the first major bipartisan gun legislation to pass through Congress in nearly 30 years. But one major question still lingers. Does it go far enough? Could it have prevented the 4th of July shooting in Highland Park, Illinois, that killed seven people, or that devastating massacre at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas, that killed 19 children and two teachers, or the racist attack at the top supermarket in Buffalo, New York, that claimed the lives of 10 people, or shooting at a medical building in Tulsa, Oklahoma, as people worked and visited their doctors, killing four, all of these happening within the span of just a few weeks this year. The Bipartisan Safer Communities Act includes $13 billion in new spending for mental health programs and securing schools. It makes background checks stricter for gun buyers under the age of 21, helps to close the so-called boyfriend loophole to restrict domestic violence offenders from purchasing guns, and incentivizes red flag laws to remove firearms from people deemed to be a danger to themselves or others. But here's what the bill does not include. Universal background checks, a ban on assault weapons in high capacity magazines, and raising the age to buy a gun from 18 to 21. Joining us now is Mark Bryan, executive director of the Gun Violence Archive, which provides near real-time data reporting of American gun violence. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, let's start with the Uvalde mass shooter. He was 18 years old. In Buffalo, the shooter was 20. In Illinois, the 21-year-old suspect had prior run-ins with the law enforcement, including a threat to kill everyone in his family. He bought a high-powered rifle and other guns legally before turning 21. Would the enhanced background checks in the Safer Communities Act have stopped any of them from buying a gun? It would stop them from buying a gun uh, at a uh, gun shop. Uh, it would not stop them from buying a gun. Uh, there are too many guns available uh, on the black market uh, in uh, you know, trades, trades on a Walmart parking lot or uh, uh, deals made on the internet. So it would slow down someone. It would keep them from just being able to go to a gun shop and buy a gun, but it would not keep them from buying a gun. And what about the red flag laws? Both the Uvalde and the Highland Park shooters had a history of violent social media posts. Would that have prevented either of them from purchasing a firearm? You know, it should. Uh, you know, if you look at the, uh, the uh, Highland Park, uh, he even talked with his father about uh, about gun violence, and uh, that would have been the biggest, well, I guess, red flag on a red flag that you could have, and it did nothing uh, because for red flag laws to work, people have to act, people have to report, people have to uh, make uh, subjective determinations. And there's a quote, and I'm sure you're very familiar with it, often used by gun proponents when it comes to the gun debate. The only way to stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. How is a leaked surveillance video of inside Robb Elementary School as the shooter stalked the halls and then showing police officers holding their positions as the minutes went by? How is that all changing that conversation? Well, we've known for years that uh, the good guy is is the way to stop a bad guy. It's just is is a fallacy. It's it's farcical uh, on pretty much every level. More guns truly do mean uh, there will be more crime. Uh, it's just it's just a reality that we live in. Uh, so when we look at how. Uh, the incident at Robb Elementary occurred, uh, I think that's going to, uh, uh, to to look at how the law enforcement addresses these incidents. If you were a legislator and you said, you know what, there's one thing that must be included in this gun legislation, what would that have been? I think uh, lowering the capacities of magazines. Um, right now, magazine capacity, anything from five to 100. And the more times a shooter has to change magazines, uh, the more opportunities he has to screw up. And by screwing up, he takes extra time, and that gives law enforcement most of the time an ability to go in and stop him uh, or his gun jams. Uh, so if we look at uh, on mass shootings, the, the public type, like uh, the ones that you've mentioned, uh, just cutting down the number of magazines, uh, cutting down the number of rounds that he can spray in a room at a given time. Uh, those those guns are very well designed to to sweep and kill everything in a room, and they do it very efficiently. We have to take the efficiency away from that uh, without, uh, you know, 
w without maybe taking the guns away because I think that's a battle that's not going to happen. Uh, but uh, if you could take the uh, capacity away from the magazines, uh, that would start slowing things down. It, this is a, a kind of a, a crystal ball question here, but it, would you say that based on the current legislation that has passed, that we, you think it'll make a difference as far as uh, eliminating or, or lowering the, the number of shootings going forward in this country? The high profile shootings, I don't think so because they are so unusual and so unique that we just don't see the signs. In retrospect, the signs are everywhere, but uh, looking at them from, uh, from the front end, you, you're not gonna see those signs. Uh, and so I don't see it really helping these that much. Uh, and, and, I, and that's really sad uh, because they need to be, uh, these kind need to be addressed. The red flag laws are gonna be the ones that are going to, over a long period of time, start to address this. Mark Bryan, Executive Director of the Gun Violence Archive, we thank you so much for your time and, and insight. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me here. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.